Hey there. I'm going to show you something fun. These five markers look like they're five different sizes, but they are actually all the same size and just arranged diagonally moving backward. I will show you another angle with my camera slash smartphone. And I have a very high resolution camera on this, so we can get a very sharp image if I focus on this red marker, for example. And when I focus on that red marker, there's something we can see, which is that the things in front of the red marker and something things behind the red marker are out of focus. The camera had to choose one area of this image to make sharp and in focus. So our red marker and our green tomato are in focus, but really nothing else. Things behind it and in front of it are much more out of focus. What if we want to take everything and make it all in focus at once? How do we do that? It's easy enough, and all we need is one little thing over here. It's this black square on the wall. This black square is actually a black post-it note. And all you need in addition to this black post-it note is a needle, which is what I have this, hey, thank, yeah, which is what I have this little tomato here for. And I'm going to poke a needle right through this post-it, just lightly. It's not a, not a big hole. doesn't need to go all the way through, just a light touch. And you can see it's got a very small hole here. I'll give you a closer angle. And there we go. You can see the smartphone in the bottom left there. I'm putting the post-it with the pinhole directly over the camera lens. And you can see I'm getting it aligned. Right now we have some vignetting, which is the black corners that you see around the edges. You can keep those if you move the pinhole far enough away from your camera lens and get a really cool effect. It's kind of like the James Bond, you know, gun barrel effect at the beginning of a James Bond movie. Now let's look at our markers again with the pinhole on. I would say it's a darker image, but things appear more in focus overall. Let's compare it to the image that we saw originally with the pinhole off. When we bring back the pinhole image, it's kind of like everything is now existing in the same concept, as opposed to one subject, like the red marker, standing out from everything else in the original. The pinhole makes everything equally unsharp. That is a pinhole term. Everything is equally unsharp, which means everything appears equally focused. When everything appears equally focused, you can move really close to things and still have the background appear equally sharp. So that means you can start to play with perspective and scale and all sorts of things. And it's easy to take the pinhole off because it's just a piece of paper. And while we got it here, let's try it. We're recording this whole thing with the new M1 iMac. Let's put this piece of paper with the pinhole directly over the M1 iMac's webcam camera. And there we go. I'm getting it kind of pressed up there. I can get it pretty close. I don't want to push it because that might actually compress the, the paper and close the pinhole a little bit. So let's take a look. Let's compare. Here's, here's what it looks like. Just me holding up the post-it to the, the, the iMac. Does the pinhole over the iMac camera give us the same unsharpening effect as the pinhole over our smartphone? I would say the marker on the far right is overall more discernible in some details on the pinhole version compared to the original. It's a little out of focus in that one. Here's another look, and let's bring our post-it note back in again just to see what that looks like right over it. And we'll switch, and now we see we're looking at the the IMAX webcam. As I mentioned, it's a macro. If you get it very close to objects, you can reproduce those objects at larger than life size, as I'm doing right here. Just, it really depends on how accurate you get your pinhole and the size of the lens you're working with. This works best on smaller smartphone camera lenses compared to big giant camera lenses for a lot of different reasons, but if you have a big giant camera lens, you can probably just take that lens off and put a pinhole over the camera. Anyway, let's do one last push in here on the iMac screen with the pinhole on the camera now. We're going zooming into the pixel level of this freeze frame, and now we can see that everything is just red, green, and blue. Or depending on what's on screen, just blue or any number of colors. That is the basis of all these monitors, is they're all just three colors blasting at us in a way that makes us think they're other colors. This was the video. I would just finished editing this, and I hope you had a good time watching it. And if you have questions, I will try my best to answer them in a way that's not confusing in the comments. 
and I hope you had a nice day, and I'm so excited because I get to go have lunch now. I'm going to post this and then go have lunch. So happy sharpening, everyone, and unsharpening.